I usually don't do streams this late. I I fell asleep and then I uh, I guess was recharged or <laughs> something of that effect. But we're back at it again. And I wanted to point out that YouTube decided to demonetize me both for uh, when I spoke about Afghanistan a few days ago and for the last thing I did a few hours ago. So they're they're you know <laughs> they're doing the same thing that caused me to go on Patreon. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you can really say at this point that won't get you on their, uh, their hit list or their radar. But uh, there's been a big controversy about Ilhan Omar's comments on Israel. Uh, and distinctively, as I've said before, I have disdain for Pelosi. I think she is one of the most uh, ineffective leaders in Congress in the history of the United States. Um, she, she just accompl has accomplished nothing. But one, one thing she said during this whole debacle that I really liked was that when Republicans were crit criticizing Omar, she said something to the effect of their hands aren't clean either. Meaning that regardless of if one is fully convinced that uh, Omar's comments warranted getting, you know, this resolution of the, an the anti-hate resolution passed or anything else, it was indisputable that Republicans also had their own, you know, demons with being discriminatory toward groups. And I, I, I mention that because a lot of times people become convinced that when you critique the Israeli government, you're either anti-Semitic, which is, again, the stupidity, but that knows no bounds, or you are um, someone who thinks the Palestinians are just these darling angels. And I actually have an article, I'm, I'm going to read a piece of it to kind of highlight this position. But, you know, the reason this, this whole thing is dangerous, right, is because it encourages people to be intellectually lazy. Um, I think most would agree that you can look at the history of probably any government and you can say, hey, look, that there was a time where that government did something pretty evil or awful. Um, that's why I talk about how crappy the U S government is, the different countries bombing the, the humanitarian crisis in Yemen. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can go into just now or that that's currently going on, but you can go throughout history and say hello to Ruben. Uh, yeah, Ruben, it's that the, uh, <laughs> YouTube is continuing to act stupid with their little demonetization nonsense. I like, I really don't know what I can talk about without having them say, we don't know if this is suitable for all advertisers. Like I'm like I'm showing you a, a video of me doing something that is uh yeah it, yeah I it, I agree it sucks, um but going back to what I was saying, when I mentioned the, the problems with the U.S. government, no one would ever say that that's anti-American, or rather that has been said of someone like Noam Chomsky who uh, if I if you saw the last Trump, Trump stream I briefly mentioned he was kicked out or banned from entering Israel because of his critiques toward them. Um, so this kind of thing of being you know, non-tolerant toward critique is, is uh, something that connects the U.S. and Israel together. But it, it really seems like we have this thing where we put people in Congress on this almost, uh, I don't know what's the proper word for it. It's a weird sort of refusal to let someone be neutral where they must just lick the, the, the nutsack of the Israeli government. And if you don't, then you're anti-Semitic. So you guys recall the, uh, the statement that Omar had where she said it was all about the Benjamins and she was talking about APAC and its influence. And that's not new. All of these different groups uh, make some politician ha change their position in light of their financial influence or otherwise they're just different endorsements and whatnot. So, you know, what she said was pretty much normal for the course, but because it's uh, Israel, we have to now slander you as being anti-Semitic. I think, and also, I, I forgot what commentator said this, but, but there was one of them who pointed out that out of the three Muslims that have been in Congress, or, or rather the House at least, um, so that's Ellison, who if you recall ran for DNC chair and had Obama's uh, crook itself and he'd call his cronies and tell him to vote for Perez instead uh, to leave and Omar, these three people, only, the only three Muslims to ever serve in the house coincidentally have all been smeared as anti-Semitic. 
the only th every single Muslim person who has served in Congress is conveniently uh, hating of Jews. And again, they're, you, you can't get a statement of any of them saying, I hope this happens to Jews. I hope that, you know, whatever. They're literally critiquing the government. They get called anti-Semitic. But again, that's how nonsensical this whole thing is. Well, Ruben, the point that um, the person was making is that you have to ask yourself, who is the real intolerant one here? Because if we're going to take someone's religion and then keep saying, because of this religion, you are, um, you have a problem with this other group, when the statements you make are kind of not really a problem whatsoever in terms of actually attacking that group, little, uh, little, little, little non-coincidental, let's put it that way. Oh, yeah, I had a feeling you were already aware of that. Um, but one of the, but in this article, and I just wanted to briefly mention this, Israeli authorities have ex, exacer, uh, what is this, ex, exappropriated thousands of acres of Palestinian land for settlements and their support, supporting infrastructure. Discriminatory bur burdens, including making it nearly impossible for Palestinians to obtain building permits in East Jerusalem, and in the and in the sixty percent of the West Bank under exclusive Israeli control, Area C, have effectively forced Palestinians to leave their homes or to build, at the risk of seeing their unauthorized structures bulldozed for decades. Israeli authorities have demolished homes in on the grounds that they lacked permits, even though the law of occupation prohibits destruction of property except for military necessity or punitively as collective punishment against families of Palestinians suspected of attacking Israelis. So I mentioned that as one of the offenses, but it's, that still is kind of, I mean, if you're going to pick between throwing somebody out of their house or making it to where they have to go and live, live somewhere else versus just outright destroying a bunch of people, uh, I think you can, you could agree that the latter is much more worse. So let me see if I can find it. This article is really good. It's by HR. It's on hrw.org. So that's Human Rights Watch, if I'm remembering its name correctly. Okay. Israeli troops killed well over 3,000 Palestinian civilians in the last three Gaza conflicts 2008, 2009, 2012, 2014 alone. Many of these attacks amount to violations of international humanitarian law due to a failure to take all feasible precautions to spare civilians some amount to war crimes including the targeting of apparent civilian structures in the west bank israeli security forces have routinely used ex excessive force in policing situations killing or grievously wounding thousands of demonstrators rock throwers suspected assailants and other others with live ammunition where lesser means could have averted a threat or maintained order Armed Palestinian groups also committed war crimes during these conflicts and at other times, including rocket attacks targeting Israeli population centers. Between the start of the first Intif Intifada, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, in December 1987 and the rest of, and the end of February 2017, attacks by Palestinians killed or at least, uh, killed, oh, killed at least 1,079 Israeli civilians, according to the Israeli human rights organization, Bitaslam. It's these names, I'm sorry. But I read that last part to show you that this, we, one of the things I try to do is remain impartial. Um, so I mentioned, or rather I read the part of it, what Israel has done and then what the Palestinians have done. And none of that is meant to tell you one side is so wonderful or one side is so great. But you have to understand the way U.S. politics is currently, like as screwed up as it is, they want you to just turn your brain off and blindly worship Israel. And unfortunately, what we end, we've we ended up having, again, due to most people not paying attention to stuff, are a bunch of people who will just blindly go along with whatever their party wants because it's something that doesn't matter all that much to them. Uh, or people who just have no opinion because they're not informed of this event. So it's, it's really just a small group who just kind of pushes back. It's like, yeah, that's, that's stupid. And it, but it is stupid. There's no reason that one group and th this, 
this government is able to mask all of its evil things by telling people that they hate a religion when the government itself is not And I feel like I'm talking to elementary age children when I say that, because it's such a simple idea. This, you know, critiquing a government isn't, uh, you know, against a particular religion. But unfortunately, we were stuck with that problem where these people just refuse to accept the idea of, hey, look, all governments are, were, are deserving of criticism. They all do something that at some point could have been done better. Sometimes it results in people dying. Sometimes it results in other issues. But to suggest that anything you say about there is uh, problematic or is hateful, I mean, it's just it's stupid. And, and again, every regular person I talk to seems to get this, but these politicians have some stick up their behinds where they just they've become convinced to keep on spreading that crap. Um, on one last note, cause I can tell, you know, Ruben is tired and it's his bedtime and he's trying to take a, take a, a nap. He, he's got, he's got to don his muscle shirt. When I was sitting here and kind of looking for some stuff to, uh, you know, kind of put into the stream because I didn't want to make anything that was really excessively long. There was a, uh, a line that Netanyahu had in this recording that is, uh, what website is this? Sot.net. Anyways, they have this recording of Netanyahu from 2001. And there's a particular line in here uh, that I think is actually, and again, this is almost 20 years ago, uh, well, 18 years at this point, but you, you get my, my idea. In, in this tape, he says, don't worry about the Americans. We easily maneuver them. So... Every time somebody starts telling me about uh, the evils of Omar and, oh, my God, anti-Semite, because, again, there, are, there is a small section of people who are basically just a bunch of Republican supporters that believe anything that uh, comes out of, you know, Orange Daddy's mouth. I'm going to say, don't worry about Omar. <laughs> uh, Israel easily maneuvers you and not her. Because that's exactly what they've allowed themselves to do. And, again, imagine if people said, uh, during the Obama years, right, with this, with these Republicans, you don't, you don't like Obama. You must hate Christians. Like, how stupid would that have been? So, I, I'm glad you, you came, Ruben. Uh, I'm gonna turn the stream off now and get demonetized by YouTube in five seconds because anything I say is uh, supposedly not advertiser, advertiser friendly. I, I will say that uh, all the stuff that Omar said is very much mundane compared to what I would say if I was in Congress. You guys are very lucky that it, you've made it to where uh, it takes so much money to go and buy that stuff and that most people won't donate because if I was in there, all the critiques of Israel and all of, it would, it would be much, much worse. So I'm not, I would, I'm not trying to be friends with any of you people. You're, you are my enemy. Most of the uh, Republicans and Democrats alike are doing the exact same thing on this issue. They're, they're not your friend. They are, they are advocating for a complete censoring of free speech, which ironically enough, you have Republicans and their commentators who previously said that's what Democrats or liberals are trying to do, and they're doing it together now. All to, all to scrape the behind of some crappy government that is able to get away with, that will, that will put up the imagery of the Holocaust to get away with its own malpractices while they commit their own versions of the Holocaust to Palestinians and other groups. So, like I said, we live in the twilight zone. Everything is backwards. Stupidity is, uh, is in right now. Thank you.